Singing and protest movements have long been linked. Um, as long as this country has been around, uh, the colonists had songs that they sang to thumb their noses at the British. And even before that, slaves were singing spirituals as a, a form of protest, a, a veiled form, because of course they couldn't actively protest their situation. They had no rights. But nonetheless, they sang these spirituals with coded language that now when we look back, um, it's very clear that they were intending to protest their situation. Also, textile mill protests of the late 1920s, as close as Marion, North Carolina, and Gastonia. Singing played an important role there. Singing was, it was crucial in the civil rights movement of the 1960s, be it marches or mass meetings. Um, there's extensive scholarship showing just how important a role singing played. And there's the Baltic Revolution of the 1980s and 1990s. It's even called the singing revolution because music and singing together played such an important role. And that brings us up to the present. So I had you listen to four different songs and I've included three of them here on this slide. We're going to put them into categories uh, trying to address the point that was being made in the Forbes article that participatory music where there's active participation in person is kind of on the decline right now compared to previous protest movements. And pre-recorded music is on the rise. So let's handle the participatory piece first and talk about it just briefly. So you watched Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, led by Issei Barnwell. And... Um, this music is intended to be sung by a group as the, the folks are marching down the street. It's not necessarily intended to be listened to or even recorded. Sometimes it is recorded, but it's usually not intended as much for wider consumption. You can label this song a zipper song, meaning you can uh, unzip it, put a new word in, and zip it up, and change it for what it needs to be. And in this case, I think she's saying about, ain't no president going to turn me around. Ain't no racism, ain't no COVID going to turn me around. And then after that, it, it, the, the march needed to continue on. So she, within the context of the song, um, provided the direction to, to keep moving. I forget which word she used, but uh, the, they had to keep walking. So she didn't stop singing. She just included that as the next verse to keep moving, to keep moving along. So the song can meet the need of the moment, both of the COVID-19. So, uh, Ain't no, ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around was used in the civil rights movement of the 1960s, but obviously they were not singing about COVID-19. But the structure of the song as a zipper song means that you can adapt it. It's flexible. You can adapt it to the situation. So overall, this type of singing is becoming less common, as the article suggests, but there are folks actively trying to get the younger generation to sing more, um, especially people like you say Barnwell, who said singing played a crucial role in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. We need to bring that back. We need because it's an effective tool, as as the cause is being made known. And that contrasts with pre-recorded music. Pre-recorded music is intended for listening. It could be listened to by an individual or a group, I suppose, but is intended for listening and maybe not as much intended to be sung along with, though sometimes it is. It's often recorded in a studio or, if in the case of the clarinet player, Mr. McGill, recorded in the living room. A lot of that happening during COVID-19. You can also include graphics and video more easily with this type of recording, and it's fixed in length. Unlike the participatory um, zipper song, like Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, which could go on indefinitely, you could just keep singing about anything you need or repeating the verses. The pre-recorded piece is fixed. And this type of music is becoming more common as a form of protest music. And you can go online right now and go on YouTube and find dozens of songs related to lots of different issues and most of them have been pre-recorded by artists in a recording studio. So I just want to live in America. The beautiful will both fall into this category.